So, hey guys, uh, welcome to Rockstars of Ethereum, a show about journey and awesome work people are doing in Ethereum and the Web3 space as a whole, aka Rockstars of Ethereum. I'm Richa. And I'm Hirsch from Ethereum, from Ethereum Push, Push Notification, notification Service. service. <laughs> we are going to keep on doing this till we get it right. So maybe like 100 episodes or so. Okay. So uh, today we have a very special guest with us. Uh, someone who has built, supported, mentored so many awesome open source projects and the founder of Gitcoin. For those of you who don't know what Gitcoin is, Gitcoin is a platform that supports open source software and is one of the best platforms to fund your pub public goods. <laughs> okay, I'm fumbling. Uh, so I want to welcome the very awesome Kevin Owaki. Hey, Kevin, how are you doing? Richa, Harsh, thank thanks so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Kevin. Not as happy as we are, though. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. So before we get started, guys, uh, we talk about how we met Kevin. We met Kevin for the first time around uh, Gitcoin Kernel Expo. Uh, it was the Genesis patch. Still fondly remembered him. Uh, he was sitting around a patio uh, and all the Kernel fellows, they were trying to get his attention. Uh, and yeah, very happy and honored that Right now, I'm talking to him one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and this is probably the first interview happening between a Gitcoin uh, founder and an ex grantee So yeah, really happy about that as well. Secretly, he still trying to get his attention. But yeah, moving forward, let's uh, get the questions rolling. So hey, awesome, Kevin. Uh, to start with, uh, can you tell us a little bit about you and uh, about Gitcoin? Yeah, for sure. So uh, Gitcoin's mission is to grow and sustain open source software and to build the place where protocols and builders can come together and build the open web. We just love open source software and everything that we've ever built has been open source. And so it's a really great honor to be helping the builders of tomorrow build the future of tomorrow. And the whole idea with Gitcoin is that it's a place that you can come and get coins in exchange for building the future. And I think that we met you all through Gitcoin Kernel, which is sort of our accelerator for people, the creme de la creme of the Gitcoin community that's building their own, you know, their own, their own projects. And so Ethereum push notification service was one of the projects in the kernel genesis block. And I think that we met in Q4 because of that. Yep. Yep. Uh, I mean, uh, we wouldn't have been here uh, unless, you know, we had the support from uh, you, Kevin, and, you know, Colonel as a whole. Mm. All right. So moving uh, a little bit more into Gitcoin. So uh, I'm sure you know the numbers better than us, but I think Gitcoin has funneled more than uh, $13 million to open source developers. That's really mind blowing. So, mm -hmm. and it, you know, it really is great to see that uh, we are finally uh, moving towards the goal of sustainable open source development. Can you right. talk about the journey, Kevin? Uh, was it harder when you began or is it harder now? And uh, what are you proud, uh, proud of and your milestones? Right. Well, I mean, I'll say that I quit my job in corporate America when I was 22 and went to do web startups. At that time, it was all about building mobile games and social games. And I think that, you know, I just like kind of learned some some skills and, and learned about open source by doing that. I, I'm now 35. And so that was like, what, 13 years ago? And, and so the journey really starts then in my consumption of open source software. Every startup that I've ever built has been, has been built off of open source software. And it just so happens that when the blockchain boom happened in 2017, I had been playing with open source software in 2015, 2016, building side projects and, and just trying to build with crypto. And I didn't realize that crypto could be a career until 2017 when the ICO boom happened. And so... For me, that was a big watershed moment where I just realized, oh my gosh, I've been building everything on top of open source. And what if we could use programmable money to, to support open source software? We value open source software and we can now program our values into our money. So what if we could, what if we could support open source with crypto? It was like sort of the big idea. But um, 
it's been a long time of toiling in obscurity and it was very lonely in when I first started Gitcoin. And, and so, you know, now I think that we have, we definitely have a lot of social proof given that Gitcoin grants is funding a lot of great projects in the ecosystem, but I still will feel like we haven't really made it until we've decentralized away from a company into a protocol. And I also will feel that we haven't made it until until we start having more of an impact on the world. So right now we're doing about $5 million per quarter of funding for open source software, which is great because when we first started, we were doing like $5,000 per quarter. Um, but, but the actual stat is that open source software creates $500 billion per year in economic value. And so we have one, two, three orders of magnitude of growth ahead of us, I think, before we're really having an impact on that ecosystem. And so got to appreciate where you've been and where you're going. And it's just different problems at different stages of growth. And um, can't wait to see Ethereum push notification grow and scale as well. Uh, give me a call if you're ever in the hot seat and things are falling apart. You need someone to commiserate with because I've been there. Awesome. Awesome. And I'll be sure to hold you to it, Kevin. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, really, really exciting. Uh, uh, for, and thanks for giving us a glimpse of the future. Uh, moving into the next part of the question, uh, I mean, I'm very interested to know why did you choose the name Gitcoin? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Bitcoin was taken, so... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, Gitcoin, I, I like the double entendre that it's a place that you can get coins and obviously get the version control software is one of the mainstays of software development. And so I just thought it was a cool name and it was the one that stuck and was memeable. And, and luckily I was able to get the domain name and there wasn't really any legitimate projects using it. So I, I feel like the Gitcoin name and brand is, is beachfront real estate and hopefully people feel that way as well. Awesome. So zooming into Gitcoin grants a bit more, I mean, quadratic funding uh, really worked wonders uh, for all the project. I'd love to know the idea behind quadratic funding and maybe if you can explain it like five to all the users who might tune in to listen. For sure. Yeah, so quadratic funding is a concept that was developed by Glenn Weil and Vitalik Buterin and Zoe Hitzig. And basically what it is, is it's a way of funding public goods. And, you know, public goods are sort of these goods that are non-excludable and non-rivalrous, which just basically means that, Harsh, when you consume open source software, it doesn't stop me from consuming open source software. Open source software is a public good. And things like clean air are examples of public goods, things that don't, like, we can both breathe clean air and it doesn't, there's, we're not competing for that good. As opposed to a consumer good, like something you buy on Amazon. If I buy one widget, then there's less widgets for you to buy, Harsh. And so public goods are actually, just despite the fact that we don't focus on them in, a lot in our day-to-day -day lives as consumers, they're actually, they provide a lot of value in the world. Like, can you imagine a world without clean air and clean water? Or can you imagine a world without open source software. We'd all be building our own web servers before we could ever get to even starting like building things that actually have value for customers because we'd be reinventing database servers and web servers and stuff like that. So anyway, TLDR, public goods are a very important class of economics that people don't focus on because there's no business models for them. And quadratic funding solves that. The way quadratic funding works is that you raise a matching pool that you deploy to projects that raise money in a crowdfunding campaign. So basically there's a matching campaign and a crowdfunding campaign that happen at the same time. And what you do is you allow users of, of that crowdfunding campaign to basically vote with their dollars about what projects you think are important. And then you subsidize those campaigns by providing a match to every crowdfund donation. And the way the match is distributed is very democratic. It's along a quadratic curve and I won't, I won't, I won't bore you with the math, but basically the more democratically supported a project is by the number by a higher number of users the more of a match it'll get so basically it's it's designed to be a democratic mechanism of funding public goods insofar as the more people vote for a project the more the matching funds are as opposed to traditional one to one matching which really only favors rich people and so the special thing about quadratic funding is that a it's an effective way of funding public goods it's uh, 
and, and B, it's it's more democratic. So we put this into practice on Gitcoin grants, and every quarter we run a Gitcoin grants round that will fund the Ethereum ecosystem. The most recent Gitcoin grants round is going on right now. Gitcoin grants round nine ends in two days on March 25th. And we've raised $1.5 million for the Ethereum ecosystem. Actually, we haven't done it. We've administered the campaign, but the community yeah. has been who's actually funding it. Yep. Awesome. The community is actually awesome. Actually, on yeah. that note, guys, so uh, definitely, definitely go to Bitcoin and uh, fund your favorite projects. I mean, a lot of community funded us in Gitcoin Grant 7 and... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, made us the top three projects over there. Uh, I'll stop bragging about that. I actually wanted to talk about Gitcoin Grants project and wanted to ask Kevin, uh, what's the mm -hmm. advice for developers and young companies who want to list on uh, Gitcoin Grants? Yeah. You know, it's funny because I'm reminded of this. I don't know if your audience knows who Paul Graham is, but he's a famous investor in Silicon Valley. And when founders are going through Y Combinator, they'd say, Paul, what's the trick to raise money for my company? And, and Paul would say, there is no trick, just have an investable company. <laughs> uh, so there is no like way to trick investors that do want to get invested in your project. And I think it's very similar with quadratic funding. The best way to get results in quadratic funding is to convince your peers that your project is worthwhile. And if you aren't convincing your peers that your project is worthwhile, then, then, you know, there's no, you basically have to solve that problem. And so one of the things I really love about quadratic funding is that it's not convincing rich people that your project is worthwhile. It's convincing your peers. Anyone who has an identity and a couple dollars can sway the results of quadratic funding. And that's, what's really powerful about it. So the, the trick is to get your community to respect your project and then to ask them to donate a dollar. So the, those are basically the TLDR of, I think, how grants become successful. Got it. And actually, that's really powerful because uh, if you think about it, a dollar can basically fund a project or give a project $500 or even more. So mm -hmm. if you're doing the project right and if you're building the community right, I think mm. that is just it. And that's the power of Gitcoin. Uh, all right, Kevin. So moving from Gitcoin a bit, let's talk about kernel. We have to talk about kernel because we are from the kernel genesis batch. So mm -hmm. uh, I know that Gitcoin kernel uh, block two has just finished. Uh, what are mm -hmm. the plans for block three? Uh, when is it beginning? And uh, what prompted uh, you guys to start uh, kernel? Right. Well, you know, we're really passionate about economically empowering software developers and the builders of the open web. And so we found that kernel is just a really complementary way of giving founders the skills and connections that they needed in order to be successful founders in the Web3 space. And so Gitcoin Grants is great because it allows you to get coins and Kernel kind of allows you to get connected. And so Harsh, I know that you went through block one and there was 200 really amazing people that went through block one with you. This sort of prompt with every kernel batch is what would you do with 200 of the most amazing people in the Web3 space? What would come out of the best minds with the best intentions, all making sense of the space together and in building the space together? And so it's an eight-week program that gives you the, well, first skills. And, and we've got a curriculum that we take each each individual through and then connection. So you're in with 200 of the smartest people and hopefully you make some friendships by doing that. And then eventually connections to investors at the end, we have a demo day. And this is a super near and dear thing to my heart because I got my start in startups by going through Techstars in 2008. I was in corporate America from 2006 to 2008 because I didn't know startups were a thing. And Techstars rescued me from corporate America and put me through a three month program where they introduced us to investors and to startup mentors. And it really changed my career and changed my life going through Techstars. And I think that Kernel is, is our way of paying it forward at Gitcoin and in in, in giving a little bit more of a Web3 slant to, to that type of program. I definitely agree. I mean, uh, the first thing about Gitcoin Kernel, which is so unique, is the 200 connections. And they're real connections. I mean, I still talk mm. to them and they're like family. 
and of yeah. course you know after that you get so much more you get to learn how to build right i mean there are a lot of ways and a lot of philosophies in web3 but when you know the best minds are talking about uh, the best things or the best design things you can do with your project it really works mm. wonders so all right kevin uh, one thing we didn't tell you about was that there's another fun and crazy interview phase which is like a five minute round prepared by richa uh, oh, great. you <laughs> know these questions in advance so okay. i'll just let richa take it from here and uh, yeah richa okay cool so uh, kevin i'm going to ask some questions like really fast so maybe uh, take 5 to 10 seconds to answer them so you think you're ready Uh yeah sure go easy on me. Okay. Okay. Very simple ones. Uh the best vacation you ever took. Best vacation I ever took was going to study abroad in Costa Rica and learning about the philosophy of the rainforest when I was in college. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh <laughs> your favorite food? Oh man. Yeah. I I'm a basic American. I like pizza. Pizza's really good, especially when you're hacking. <laughs> Yeah, great superhero. Um, I mean, I feel like the catch-all easy answer is Superman because he has all the powers, yeah. but I I feel like that's almost a cop out. And so, if I was going to go with a niche superpower or niche mm -hmm. niche super superhero, um, yeah. I I like uh I like Spider-Man. I just think that Spider-Man is fun and and the universe around Spider-Man wow. is 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 very playful and and I like that a lot. Dogs or cats? Dogs, definitely dogs. You can probably hear my dogs barking in the background. <laughs> I think I've seen them also a couple of times in some some videos that you were there. Downtown or suburbs? Uh downtown, for sure. There's more to do downtown. Yeah, much more things to do. Okay. So, uh lastly, uh what is the first word or first thing that comes to your mind when I say the following words? Gitcoin grants, quadratic funding. Nice. Uh, Colorado. Uh, nature. A lot of biking. We see that every weekend. For sure. NFTs. Yeah. yeah. NFTs. The hot trend. They're the hot trend right now. <laughs> yep. Public goods. Public goods are good. That's the meme I'm trying to start. I haven't gotten <laughs> really it off the ground yet. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh Bitcoin. Uh Bitcoin created a whole new category in ecosystem. Uh so Bitcoin is punctuated equilibrium. Hmm. Cool. Uh your top top 3 projects of Ethereum. Um Ethereum itself, I don't know if that counts, that's like the house. And yeah. then I'm really excited about Ethereum 2. and i am excited about ethereum push notification service <laughs> we we, we yeah we didn't we didn't ask you to show that though, but thanks for that it's important to build infrastructure so the dapp builders like me can just focus on the customer problem so i i think that you're building a piece of infrastructure that's missing thanks you and really appreciate that uh, and lastly uh, what does ethereum mean to you um Ethereum is about having transparent economic games that the rules can't be changed on you. And so that's important to me because I want to have an economic system that isn't based off of information asymmetries and isn't based off of capture of the richest people. And so that's why Ethereum is important to me. Awesome. So I got one more question. Your favorite neon color? I like the Tron color scheme. I, a lot of Gitcoin's brand is based around Tron and so I don't know neon neon green probably. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. You guys have more of a pastel color set. I'm looking at your virtual backgrounds right now, which I think is cool. It's more bright. Yeah, we keep on trying new color schemes. <laughs> uh Yeah. Awesome. So, uh thank you so much Kevin uh Awaki for joining in. You're really, really awesome, and this was a fun interview. Before going out, we will just request our users to go donate to Gitcoin Grants Round Nine. Hopefully, we'll edit it and push this video out before it ends. And yeah, remember to support public goods. Thanks, awesome Kevin, and thank you all the awesome people who might be watching.
I see awesome folks. Bye for now. Thanks for having me.